think EVs are a, a great option for a lot of people. I was kind of shocked when I bought one myself. What a day to choose to announce jobs cut on jobs day of all of all days. Uh, so this is a Reuters report and he sent an email apparently saying that he was um, had super bad feelings about the economy. I think that was the exact words he said, very academic. Um, and because of that, he's pausing all hire, hiring and wants to cut about 10% of the workforce. That really a dull moment. Tesla stock today down almost 10%, over $69 per share on news of a leaked email from Elon Musk suggesting that Tesla will axe up to 10% of its non-manufacturing, non-factory worker, non-solar installing workforce. Of course, this is being widely misreported in the mainstream finance media, adding further panic and chaos around Tesla stock, leading to a massive sell-off today. Surprise, surprise, the mainstream media getting their facts wrong about Tesla again. In this video, We'll talk about what's actually happening, what it means for Tesla and Tesla stock investors, and watch some of the hilarious reactions in the mainstream finance media. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. First up, Tesla stock today, as I mentioned, absolutely smoked down well over 9%, more than $69 per share, closing just over $700 per share. Still the bargain of the fucking century, in my opinion. See you guys in 2032. Of course, the stock market in general selling off today, the NASDAQ 100 down almost 3%. Apple almost 4%, Amazon stock down 2.5%, Alphabet stock down almost 3%, Rivian stock down over 5%, and Lucid Motors down almost 6.5%. So here is the alleged email from Elon Musk. Subject, headcount reduction to everybody. Quote, Tesla will be reducing salaried headcount by 10% as we have become overstaffed in many areas. Note, and by the way, this is something that I think no one in the mainstream finance media took the time to actually note. Note, this does not apply to anyone actually building cars, which is a large portion of Tesla's workforce, building battery packs, same, or installing solar. Hourly headcount will increase. Elon. So this isn't Tesla slashing 10% of their workforce, which is really important, but obviously not so important that you'd make sure you got your facts right before reporting this widely in the mainstream media. Overall, the company's still growing aggressively, but Elon noting here that the company has become bloated in some areas. If you happen to be new around these parts, this is not the first or the second time that Tesla has massively slashed its workforce. Here's a great tweet from Sawyer Breaking Merit. Here are two examples of reduction in Tesla headcount in 2018 and 2019. There's a key difference this time. The reduction will not apply to anyone building cars, batteries, or installing solar. We can see here, if you wanna pause the video and read a bit more, go for it. Long story short, Tesla cutting headcount by 9% as part of company-wide restructuring plan. And again, I wanna underscore, this was 9% of the entire company, whereas now Tesla culling 10% of parts of their company. Very different. And another one, Tesla cuts 7% of workforce and Elon Musk sees a very difficult road ahead as investors hammer the stock. This was back in January, 2019. So I'm sure within a year or two at most, practically everyone will have completely forgotten about this as well. Speaking of forgetting about things, I mean, in completely unrelated matters, uh, let's hear some recent comments from President Joe Brandon discussing Elon Musk, the email, Tesla's workforce and landing on the moon, and also not missing an opportunity to deep throat the UAW's eggplant once again. P.S. I'm not so sure Brandon's handlers will be happy that he went off script with this one. Elon Musk has, asked, has said that he has a super bad feeling about the U.S. economy, he's laying off 10% of his workforce. What do you say to Elon Musk about his feeling about the economy? Jamie Dimon has said some more things. Well, let me tell you, while Elon Musk is talking about that, Ford is increasing their investment overwhelmingly. I think Ford is increasing the investment in building new electric vehicles, 6,000 new employees, union employees, I might add, in the Midwest. Um, the former Chrysler Corporation, Stellantis, they are also making similar investments in electric vehicles. Intel is adding 20,000 new jobs for making computer chips. Um, so, uh, you know, lots of luck on this trip to the moon. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, you know. Mr. President, are you going to Saudi Arabia, Mr. President? 
I'm not sure where I'm going. I, I... So for those who aren't aware, Reuters recently reported they haven't actually shared the email itself, but reported that Elon Musk sent an email to Tesla executives in which he said he was super concerned about the economy. Shout out to a recession. Biden asked about Elon's thoughts on the economy and then Biden, instead of responding to anything to do with the economy, instead talks about all the uh, union jobs that Ford and Stellantis are creating and then goes off script and talks about uh, landing on the moon, SpaceX. So I think the summary of what President Brandon said there was, boy oh boy, this UAW eggplant sure does taste delicious and don't worry about the economy because we'll continue to gaslight you and tell everybody that everything's fine. In fact, it's never been better and if you're dumb enough to believe it, well, good because we want you to believe it. Let's check out what Adam Jonas and Morgan Stanley had to say about this. Quote, Elon's reported economic warning, a whale in the lithium mine? <laughs> Ah, oh, jeez. According to a Reuters article citing what it described as an email to employees with the title, quote, pause all hiring worldwide, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said he has a super bad feeling about the economy, adding the company needs to cut about 10% of its headcount. Again, I want to clarify, not the company's headcount, when you factor things in, the number of workers that may actually fall under this culling, probably at most, maybe four, five, or 6% of the company's workforce, not 10 big difference. Tesla did not comment on the article. In our view, Tesla's not your average canary in the coal mine. It's more like a whale in the lithium mine. We wanted to share some initial thoughts with you and follow up after further analysis. 1. Elon Musk has a uniquely informed insight into the global economy. We believe that a message from him would carry high credibility. Tesla is the world's most vertically integrated car company, from mining to chips, down to real-time miles traveled and vehicle charging data. 2. If the world's largest EV company warns on jobs and the economy, investors should reconsider their forecasts on margins and top-line growth. Specifically, we'd encourage investors to discount auto gross margins, which likely peaked in 1Q, due to near-term disruptions, Shanghai lockdown, blah blah blah, rising input costs, timing differences between Tesla's price hikes and battery supplier pass-throughs, ramp costs at Berlin and Austin, and other factors. And this is a fair point over the short term. We'll probably see a decline in automotive margins for the short term. I mean, kind of expected when you have fascist lockdowns in Shanghai, plus you're ramping two brand new massive facilities but short-term blip on the radar. While we would still say that demand for Tesla vehicles exceeds their capacity to produce, this is not necessarily mutually exclusive with an ability, if not a need, for Tesla to control costs on a go-forward basis. Three, Tesla productivity on a per worker basis has room to improve. I mean, this statement would be true no matter what point in time you ever say this, right? There's always room to improve. As an example, take Tesla's 2022 revenue per employee, 853,000 versus Ford at 757,000. For a clean sheet, non-UAW auto company that essentially has just two volume cars, three and Y, that's a pretty small productivity gap, 12% better revenue per employee. Caveat here, of course, Ford's just making vehicles. Behind the scenes, Tesla has developed the world's best real-world AI team and technology. They're working on crazy shit that no one would even imagine. So a huge amount of Tesla's headcount isn't directly related to manufacturing automobiles. This is not an apples to apples comparison. Most of Tesla's intrinsic value, I would argue, is software, AI, and that stuff isn't being factored in. If all Tesla was doing was producing vehicles, the hardware, they could probably slash their workforce by 75 plus percent, which would make this a very different comparison. One could argue that more than 100% of Tesla's revenue per employee premium to Ford is accounted for by Tesla's 40% higher average transaction prices, which we estimate is at least 20% higher than Ford. Four, time to revise EV forecasts down? The world has changed in many ways this year. Supply chain is under tremendous stress. Inflation is hampering demand and capital markets are less ebullion. The economy is decelerating. Geopolitical risks are front and center. It is possible to be a long-term EV bull while revising down the adoption curve through mid-decade. This is a fair statement. That being said, I don't actually think there's gonna be a meaningful impact on EV adoption. It doesn't really matter what's happening over the short or medium term. Some people get this, some people don't. Here's what happens. One or two years from now, maybe three at most, you have to be a moron to buy an ICE vehicle over an EV because the ICE vehicle will be A, more expensive to buy, B, more expensive, significantly more expensive to own and operate, C, less safe, D, it pollutes. I could keep going on and on and on. This is an important milestone. At this point in time, consumers who aren't morons won't buy ICE vehicles. This means that EV adoption is gonna be accelerated irrespective of how many EVs are being produced. There's two ways this plays out. If there's massive, and I mean massive constraints in terms of supply, 
either supply chain issues, material cost increases, manufacturers not building enough capacity to produce the EVs that consumers want. It just means the entire global automotive market massively contracts, at least over the short to medium term. The one thing to focus on is production capacity of electric vehicles. Which companies are increasing their production capacity at the fastest rates? These are the companies, or the company, that wins. This is a short-term blip on the radar which is completely meaningless over the long term. Of course, don't tell the short-sighted stock market that. And now let's see what the mainstream finance media has to say about this leaked email. Elon Musk is pausing worldwide hiring at Tesla because he has, in his words, a super bad feeling about the economy. Another day, more Elon news. And, and this is something that we're definitely paying attention to because it comes just after we heard from J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon about the potential hurricane on the horizon, on the economic horizon. Um, what do you make of this of this report about what Elon is thinking and, and about what he's doing as a result? Yeah, I think the question is, is this the canary in the coal mine? You know, what, what does this say about then? Look, I think a big part of this is what we're seeing in China. Zero COVID driven. I mean, it's been a debacle in terms of what Musk and Tesla, as well as others in China, and, and the delivery trajectory is going to soften for the year. And that's something that you know we cut our numbers, others have too. Look, I think part of this is cautionary. I, I still think demand's outstripping supply you know, globally. But I think he's also setting a tone, trying to get ahead of this. Prudent, but no doubt, you know, this is going to be one on the knee jerk, you know, that there's going to be worries that more negative news is coming, uh, especially when Musk talks. And, and I think that's what this is really going to have a ripple effect. Yeah, Dan, I, I, I think a lot of people are trying to figure out, is this an indication of how severe those lockdowns in China have been in terms of its ability to produce cars? Or is he seeing something on the demand side of, of the picture, too? Uh, any idea, any, any channel checks, any thoughts, anything you've heard that can tell you about what the demand picture looks like for, for Tesla and maybe for other EVs at this point? I'll take that one, Becky. Tesla's demand remains absolutely insane. In fact, ludicrous. And they'll sell every vehicle they produce for many years, if not a decade or more, to come. This has nothing to do with demand. This has nothing to do, in my opinion, with supply chain challenges for Tesla. Yes, the fascist futile lockdowns in Shanghai sucked, but this is nothing the f to do with Tesla's demand, their products, nothing at all to do with that. This is to do with Elon Musk realizing, huh, the company's getting a little bit bloated. Let's purge some of the dead weight. Let's become more resourceful, a leaner company, more efficient. And yes, I think there's a very, very strong concern of us going into a major recession. Therefore, I may as well take some proactive steps here. This will allow Tesla to further accept accelerate their lead while other companies, you know, the ones that are trying as fast as they fucking can to transition to EVs, but they don't actually have any quality technology. They don't have the engineers. They don't have the scale. They don't have the product customers actually want to buy. They have to invest the tens of billions of dollars. They also have the legacy costs and overhang of ICE vehicles. You know, those companies, Elon Musk is almost preparing his troops to take more ground while these other companies flounder, fail, scramble, and ultimately collapse. The short story here, if Elon's right, things are super bad with the economy. This is going to allow Tesla, and this is why Elon Musk is positioning Tesla to more aggressively accelerate their plans. Meanwhile, companies like Ford, General Motors, you name it, are going to struggle big time. Yeah, I mean, right now, from a demand perspective, even over this weekend, you know, we, we still have demand as tripping supply of Tesla by about 30. So I, okay. I don't think that it's, it's a demand issue in terms of that sense. Now, in terms of China and zero COVID, I think that's probably 75% of the reason, because that's the hearts and lungs of Tesla. Think about from a demand perspective, it's about 40% and also production. And I, I think this is also something you will see pocket spend in Austin as well as Berlin. But look, clearly, this is a much different Musk than we saw in mid-April. The one that ultimately bought Twitter, you know, at the 5420. And, and, and I think this really, you know, you're starting to see a big, a different tone from Musk. And I think that's reflected in the stock in terms of everything we've seen in China. That's the biggest question, though. This stock's already down 30 percent year to date. Has, has this been baked into this? Is this is something is this something that investors kind of sniffed out before we got these comments from him? Or this yeah, I mean, work? you have the knee jerk negative today, but I do believe this is pretty much baked in. I think deliveries we've talked about deliveries are going to miss you know anywhere from 15 to 20 percent potentially because of China. Now the focus will be on the month of June, second half trajectory. And again, this is also Musk, you know, I think really trying to get ahead of it. But but no doubt, it's definitely a different tone. Yeah, And, and obviously we have to see how this picture shapes up in the second half. But a lot of frustration 
coming out of China because that that's ultimately the hearts and lungs of the Tesla story. And now from Tesla bull Dan Ives to Tesla closet bull, but apparently at least as far as we're aware, I guess he's not really comfortable about you know just coming out and being proud. Tesla bear Craig Irwin, who seems to worship the company, has nothing but good things to say about the company, but then hates the stock price. It's always fun to watch Craig. Craig shares we just saw it almost down seven percent right now. Um, where do you think that the super bad feeling about the economy is coming from? Is this a sign that uh, Musk sees waning demand for their vehicles? Oh, waning demand. Um, obviously, there's a speed bump, right? I think they, they get a lot of great data out of their um, their showrooms. Um, they, they really monitor foot traffic very carefully, and they have their fingers on the pulse of conversions, people signing up and optioning cars, um, and then either going or not going with the purchase. It's not a surprise in this environment that we, we do see um, changes there. Um, you know, this is a very well-run company for them to focus on taking out cost now uh, is not a surprise. Longer term demand, I don't think really is all that changed. You know, EVs are inevitable. Um, you know, I ask everybody that buys a new car to drive an EV and, and make a choice. Um, you know, I think EVs are a, a great option for a lot of people. I was kind of shocked when I bought one myself. Wait, what? Did Craig, he, uh, did, he, he did just, he just, he just, I mean, this is one step to coming out of the closet. Craig Irwin just admitting that he's not only purchased an EV, but apparently, at least my interpretation there, has been surprised at how amazing it is versus an ICE vehicle. Does anyone know? Anyone got any intel? What brand of EV did Craig Irwin buy? I'm really curious. And by really curious, I mean, this is a great litmus test. If you hear anybody, I mean, I just hate to be so brutally honest, but it's true. If you hear anybody claiming that they've purchased an EV and it's not a Tesla, you have to ask the question, exactly how much brain damage are you suffering from? Now, I understand everyone has their different choices and preferences, I like the way this looks, I like the brand, but more often than not, in cases like this, there's a lot of signaling. You'll often find somebody who hates the price of Tesla stock refuse to even buy the vehicle, even though it's an obvious superior option on everything that matters. Instead, they'll go for something like the Ford Mark E. Shout out to Dan Infantile. I won't say his last name, I don't want to out him. So please, if anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. What EV is Craig Owen driving? I got a bit sidetracked there, but practically everything that Craig said, I agree with. Yeah, the market's going to have some turbulence. You think, though, that if, you know, taking out costs were a good thing in this environment, that the stock would be reacting more favorably to this news, now down more than 7%. And we know how this turned out. Tesla stock closing down almost 10% today. This is a fair point too. You'd think if the stock market was rational, oh, cutting some of the dead weight, becoming more resourceful, lowering costs, overhead. This is a good thing for the company, right? But of course, the stock market, short-sighted, short on brain cells, overly emotional, overreacting, hates uncertainty, interpreting this news very negatively, keeping in mind that the wider stock market got wrecked today as well. But from a Tesla stock investor's point of view, I like to see this. I don't like people losing their jobs. It sucks. I mean, I've literally been fired before, so I know how it feels. Although, in fairness, I was fired for being me, not because the company needed to scale back. <laughs> A story for another day. The point is, this is a bullish signal from a Tesla stock investor's point of view. Elon sees room for improvement. Remember, Tesla is one of the most resourceful, lean and efficient companies of all time. They get more done with less than anyone else. So every time there's an opportunity to purge some of the dead weight, to optimize the company, I'm all for it. Any sense of what kind of jobs he might be talking about here? Are these factory jobs? Are these back office jobs, SG&A, that kind of thing? Well, as we know from Elon's email, despite what the mainstream media are reporting, this isn't factory workers, people assembling, producing batteries, or installing solar. It's basically office workers. And I suspect of these, quote unquote, office workers, a large portion of the people who ultimately end up getting the ax will be the stay-at-home bludgers, who we've discussed recently on this channel. You know, I don't have any particular insight on which jobs, you know, I, I do feel for those employees. Um, but, you know, while this may be uh, taken as bad news for Tesla right now, today, um, it, it really is actually fantastic news for the industry. So those employees are um, almost always highly self-motivated, well-trained, um, top quality employees uh, at Tesla. And people really... Um, appreciate the expertise that they bring when they come to the, the different companies that they've been hired to over the years. Um, to have, you know, 10,000 Tesla employees out there looking for um, for new jobs will be a blessing for the EV industry, which is really looking to staff up right now. Again, I want to clarify, it's probably closer to maybe three, four, five, or 6,000 employees, not 10,000. And that being said, again, we have to think about this for a moment. It sucks that people will lose jobs, and certainly there'll be opportunity for Tesla employees who get shit canned to go work for another EV company company, but my suspicion is that the most valuable employees in terms of their ability to contribute and help Tesla along their mission won't be going anywhere.
anywhere. Tesla isn't going to be getting rid of exceptional employees. Tesla isn't going to be getting rid of employees who are dedicated to the mission. The employees that are let go in general, I hate to say this, but it is reasonable. The employees that are let go by Tesla in this culling are likely to be the least productive in terms of the amount of value they contribute to the company and the least bought into the mission. After all, if they were adding more value and fully bought into the mission, they'd be far too valuable to let go. It doesn't matter how big or small your company is, whether you employ 10 people or 100,000, there's going to be a top 50% of employees in terms of how much value they bring, how committed they are. There's going to be a top 10%, a top 1%, a top 0.1%. And that also means there's a bottom 50% and bottom 10% and bottom 1%. These are the folks most likely to get shit canned. So as wonderful as it will be for all of these EV startups and legacy automotive manufacturers to start hiring everyone that Tesla lets go, the problem is they're really going to be getting the leftovers and the least valuable players. Better than nothing, but it's not really going to help. So all of the small companies, um, companies across the ecosystem, this is a this is a blessing in disguise. And yeah, it's a short term a short term issue for Tesla, but I don't think it's going to impact their ability to hire in the future. Uh, Craig, it's interesting, given the fact that Tesla, the entire basis for how the company has performed and how it's valued is that it's on a path to what twenty million units sold in twenty thirty, whatever the number you want to make up. It's it's multiples of what they're producing right now. So is this the time to actually cut back by ten percent, or does it just show that some employers, you know, in a tight labor market? overhired, uh, maybe, you know, seems Elon Musk doesn't like people working from home, thinks that's one way to call the flock. So I, I'm having a hard time uh, kind of reading into this, this very prudent cost-cutting uh, mechanism when we're talking about a company with good margins that expects to get a whole lot bigger in coming year. Yeah, so, so if you really want to talk about the growth trajectory, the, the one negative for me that, that was um, the most material in the last few months was when the um, transport minister of India just said, hey, we're, we're, we're not dropping our, uh, our tariffs. And then uh, Elon said uh, a couple weeks later, hey, all plans for India are on hold. Now, they had selected a site for a facility back in 2019. Craig's been saying this on and off. He's been talking about how Tesla will soon announce an India factory for years. And I don't know where he's got this information from. I mean, it may be legitimate, but to me, it makes absolutely no fucking sense to build a Tesla factory in India at all, unless it's a solar factory. The new vehicle market in India is tiny, but that's not even the point. The point is the average sale price of a new vehicle in India is about $3, approximately. Not the right market for Tesla yet, unless, as I said, they're building solar. The solar market in India, different f***ing story. Can somebody please explain to me why on earth it would make sense for Tesla to build an automotive factory in India? And can somebody please explain where these rumors have actually come from? Don't get me wrong, I'm sure Tesla's been sniffing around everywhere on planet Earth. After all, they plan very far in advance. But I find it unlikely that Tesla would have been seriously committed to building a factory in India, at least not an automotive factory. There's much higher priorities. Massive expansion in China, a second factory in Europe, and yes, a third factory in the United States. To me, make a lot more sense than India for now. Give it five or six years, maybe it's a different story. Um, and India um, can and will be just as big as China uh, for Tesla in the next several years. I'm really struggling to understand exactly how high Craig Irwin is and what exactly he's ingested. The new passenger vehicle market in India per annum, less than 3 million units per year. China, it's well in excess of 20 million units per year. Am I missing something here? How in the flying f would the India passenger vehicle market be comparable in size and opportunity to the new vehicle market in China, which is approximately 10 times the scale? What am I missing here? Is Craig getting confused and thinking that two-wheeler vehicles in India are the same as passenger vehicles and counting those as well? And is he unaware that quote-unquote luxury vehicles, which at this point in time, based on the price point, that would be a Tesla, account for like 1% of new passenger vehicle sales per year in India? So, you know, that's, that's less economic than... Um than strategic uh, at, at this point. Um, economics, you know, they've done a very good job passing through price to support margins in their cars. Um, my instinct is that yes, maybe the growth rate um, for the near to intermediate term won't be as exciting as what they had been hiring for, been planning for. Um, but uh, it does, doesn't change the outlook for EVs. <laughs> Completely agree with Craig's final point there. This changes absolutely nothing about EV adoption, the technology, Tesla's unassailable lead, or the long-term future. This is short-term irrelevant noise. We had um, a warning, in a sense, from Elon Musk and job cuts at Tesla. Yeah, I mean, what a day to choose to announce jobs cut on jobs day of all, of all days. Uh, so this is a Reuters report, and he sent out an email apparently saying that he was 
um, had super bad feelings about the economy. I think that was the exact words he said, very academic. Um, and because of that, he's pausing all hire, hiring and wants to cut about 10% of the workforce. That would be about 10,000 employees. There's that 10% of all employees misinformation continuing to be propagated in the mainstream finance media. What a surprise. Getting the facts wrong, having a material impact on investors' perceptions of Tesla, Tesla stock gets erect. And by the way, this is a good thing. I mean, I'm still accumulating Tesla stock. So the cheaper Tesla stock is, the happier I am. But isn't it amazing? Practically every media outlet reporting this news is getting the facts wrong in a really big and important way. And I have to say, you know, just to nerd out a little bit, this is interesting in the context of Jobs Day because if the Fed is able to tighten financial conditions, if there is concern about the economy, this is one way where it would show up in the real economy. And of course, um, we've heard from other tech companies talking about freezing uh, or cutting back on, employ on employees, uh, Netflix, Twitter. So, you know, Tesla, not necessarily just a one-off, Anna. Mm, yeah, really interesting comments from uh, Elon Musk, given we know that he's had issue with the work practices yeah. that some of his staff want to adopt of late, the whole work from home return to office debate. Uh, we will continue to watch those developments. Uh, and it's not just Coinbase. Look at Tesla. Right. I mean, my morning started with an alert on Tesla looking to potentially cut 10 percent of its 100,000 yeah. strong workforce at a time where delay backlogs for their products are strong. You order a Tesla today, you may not get it for a year. It, and it's not just the cuts. It's also the hiring for freeze that we've seen also talked about among some of the other major technology companies out there right now. And so Tesla, 10,000 employees, that's 10% essentially of their global workforce. There's that fake news once again, 10% of the entire workforce, that's 10,000 employees. Oh boy. Um, and then thinking about where they are actually going to be able to deliver on the vehicles that are in that backlog, that still comes back to the supply chain management that every company we've heard from this overall earnings season has had to address in one form or another, whether that be on the parts or the chips specifically for a company like Tesla or other auto manufacturers with the EV ambitions, or even if that's down to the inventory management that we're going to talk about in a company with Lululemon as well. And you have to wonder, I'll, I'll leave it this on, uh, with this on Tesla, is Elon Musk seeing weakness in, in his numbers amongst high-end consumers mm. because of the plunging stock market? Something to watch moving forward. The mass market yeah. was, was the vehicle that he wanted to get out there with, and so that would be the real weakness because it's the mass market vehicle and people trading up who are now in an environment of consumers trading down, the number of people and reservations, if they do not add on those special packages to that mass market Model 3, how does that impact the profitability for Tesla? I'm still a gas car guy. Who'd have guessed? Interesting closing comment there from Brian, admitting that he's still a gas car guy. Remember those comments earlier about within one or two years, you'll have to be a uh, fill in the blank to buy an ice? Yep, so let's see if his tune changes in the next couple of years. It'll be very interesting to see how the stock market reacts to the clarification that Tesla isn't in fact letting go 10% of their entire workforce, but 10% of a small subset of their workforce. And I have to say, I'm not a religious man. Well, apart from believing in the one true God, which is of course the flying spaghetti monster, but I have to say, I think the universe and or the flying spaghetti monster is certainly conspiring to give long-term intelligent Tesla stock investors the buying opportunity of a century. I mean, seriously, you couldn't make this Let's recap what's happened in just the last few months to negatively impact the price of Tesla stock, which previously peaked well over $1,200 per share. First, Elon Musk selling Tesla stock out of necessity to exercise stock options lest they expire worthless. Very active selling Tesla stock forces the price down, but in addition, there's widespread panic throughout parts of the stock market. Oh my God, Elon's selling, oh my God. People start dumping their shares. Big funds try to get in front of the trade and they start dumping their stock to try and make short-term profits. Huge, huge, huge downward pressure on Tesla stock from multiple directions. Then of course, there's the macro environment, which causes widespread panic, rates going up, people freaking out, multiples coming down. Oh my God, let's panic out of gross stocks, so on and so on, affecting everything in the stock market, including Tesla in an outsized way. Oh, and then there's the fascist futile shutdowns in Shanghai. Oh, and then there's also the horrible war in Ukraine. Oh, and then Elon also makes a bid to acquire Twitter to uphold the principles of free speech. Investors freak out. People worry, what if he's got margin? What if he's sell more Tesla stock? Blah, 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 blah. Many investors dump stock. Many funds try to get in front of this trade as well. More downward pressure on Tesla stock. Elon then publicly declares that he's going to vote Republican in the midterms because he can no longer support Democrats, aka the party of hate. This, of course, causes an enormous number of attacks on Elon Musk and Tesla from every direction you can imagine. Some of them truly absurd. More panic, more investors freaking out, more investors dumping the stock. And now there's news of Tesla. 
cutting 10% of their workforce, which as we know, isn't actually 10%. The point I'm making here, this is just unbelievable. I mean, seriously, the flying spaghetti monster is doing us a solid here. Tesla stock's up around $1,200. Then stuff that has nothing to do with Tesla causes the stock to get crushed. Then it comes back a little bit. Then something else, next minute Tesla stock's down in the $700 range. I've said it at least 420,000 times. Tesla stock today, bargain of the fucking century, in my opinion. The confluence of completely irrelevant factors currently artificially crushing Tesla's stock price. It's a gift from the gods. Shout out to the flying spaghetti monster. Can't wait to see what's next. Leave your guess below. What's the next thing that's got nothing to do with Tesla, their long-term execution, their unassailable lead, their engineering prowess, nothing to do with the company that crushes the stock even further. It's getting farcical. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. Just posted updates to my Tesla price targets and Tesla valuation model. Plus you'll gain access to well over 100 exclusive pieces of content and loads of perks. So see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.